It's the Locked On Flyers podcast for Thursday, October 3rd, your daily dose of Flyers news analysis and high quality content that's coming down to the wire on Flyers training camp this year. Yeah, I'm happy about that. Your Locked On Flyers, your daily podcast on the Philadelphia Flyers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, and thanks for making Lockdown Flyers your first listen every day. I am Rachel Donner. You can find me on Twitter at rmiriam. I'm here, as always, with Russ Cohen, who's on all your favorite social media apps at Sportsology. We as a show are at Lockdown Flyers on Instagram threads, Blue Sky, and Twitter as well. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Place your first $5 bet, and you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. You can find us over on YouTube or on the SiriusXM app or anywhere you listen to podcasts. Subscribe to get our latest episode as soon as it's available here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Russ, we've got one more preseason game tonight, although it's somewhat meaningless. Uh, as Torts said, uh, we'll get to what he had to say, a preview of the game as well as just check in with some of the other teams around the Metro on how their camps are going. In the meantime, uh, Cal Peterson officially went on waivers yesterday. We're going to assume that he will clear today. Nobody's touching that. Nobody's touching that. Um, Following the game in Boston, we talked about a lot of the block shots and a couple of the guys were uh, banged up a little bit. Tyson Forster stayed out of practice yesterday because of that block shot as a precaution. Definitely want to keep an eye on that. Nick Sealer did attend practice. Uh, he kind of took one as well. Now, interestingly, you know, we're still in this flyers group extras group situation yeah. at camp here. Emil Andre, Ule Lixell, and Jet Luchenko were the last bubble guys in the main group. So, like, without knowing anything, like, what do you make of that? I mean, what I make of it is I think of all the guys, I probably would give it to Andre. Uh, But again, the problem is, is that they'll say, well, we have guys that can play the power play, even though he could do other things. And, you know, probably doesn't make it at the beginning. So maybe that, you know, it goes to Lixell instead. But the problem is Lixell may end up sitting. And so it's like, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I Both Lixell and Andre at this point are old enough that they sit for a road trip. Like, even if they don't get in, it's fine. Yeah, I think so. I'm leaning in that direction. I think in years past, I might have disagreed. But I think that you know, maybe just start the season or they'll figure out a way to rotate them in. Um, I think that'll be okay. In the meantime, sort of the B squad you have, um, I just keep thinking of them as triplets, even though they're nothing alike, just (laughs) because I lump them together in my head as Abel's Richard and Eklund. Right. Um, And then we have Bonk, Jenning, Granz and McDonald for the defensemen. And then Alexei Kolosov is the lone goaltender with Peterson uh, on waivers. So, Interestingly, you know, we talk about Emil Andre as probably the guy that's earned the spot above anybody. But John Tortorella says, yeah, I agree with that. He's earned like this eighth defenseman spot here um, because he's had a really good camp, said that they had maybe initially penciled Adam Jenning into that spot, but he hasn't had a good camp. And, you know, I think Jenning had a a good start to his camp, but it is not continue that way and I think he's regressed a little bit as camp has gone on and Andre's absolutely earned it on the defensive side of things yeah I think so um but then you have the problem here that Eric Johnson you know that extra defenseman is an older guy so now you're bringing if there's an injury you're you're now putting an older guy into the lineup and hoping he doesn't get injured yeah, I know it doesn't always happen, but it does sometimes. And that's where it's tough having your extra defenseman being an older guy. Right. And Tort said explicitly that he doesn't think they need a defenseman for that initial road trip. And he doesn't want to have a younger guy sit for those games. He would rather take the risk of having Eric Johnson as the seventh D, don't need an eighth, and have Emil Andre play 
ostensibly with the Phantoms. Okay, in, but it's again, Andre's the, not like he's not 20, he's not 21, he's older than that. He can deal with it. He's already played professionally. Like it's a cop out by John. That's my estimation of that. I think it, it's a choice. I don't think it's a cop out. I don't think it's a good or a bad thing. I think it's just a choice and a strategy. Oh, I'm not saying it's a bad there. thing, but it's an easy out. Like, you know, if you want to just say that and, you know, and not get any opposition. Oh yeah. Just, he needs to play. He's, he's young. Interesting though, that, um, you know, we've been saying all along, the choice is going to be between an eighth defenseman and likely, Ule right. Le, right. We've been yes. saying this for like a week and a half and that's where it's ended up. And Emil Andre is that defenseman. And I think that, you know, it, it's going to be a, a last minute decision, I think, for the Flyers, um, as that's what, kind of their style in terms of we won't know until the final roster comes out, um, unless in a change of, you know, behavior towards says something or Danny Breer says something prior to that, or, you know, they send Andre down earlier, but I just don't see that happening. No, I don't either. I mean, that part I agree with, but I'm looking at it. You know, he's played like, if you count, you know, his one year, well, he's, he's a little bit more in the SHL. So it's going to be about 150 games, something in that range for Andre. That's enough games where I don't think he's going to be bothered by sitting a bit. Yeah, well, I, I think it's a question to ask and a question that Torts is going to have to answer and Danny Briere is going to have to answer as well. Uh, Torts also said that he was disappointed more guys didn't take advantage of opportunities. Um, he wanted guys to stand out so much that it made the decisions easy for him. And that has not been the case in his opinion. I get his disappointment. I do. I mean, it's not like the guys didn't try. It's just sometimes that's what happens. Yeah. I mean, I would say with Jennings, that's Definitely the case. I would think with Adderd, it's even more disappointment Yeah, there. Um, and we've talked about that. I think, you know, on the forward side that I think Richard has done generally well. Yeah. Uh, and I think that, but with, you know, my triplets, I think that really only one of them was going to have a shot and that they were all call up options anyway that right. none of them really i thought would make the roster no the excuse that we could use for them is they haven't been in north america and that is an yeah. adjustment so we can't say we're shocked that this happened right and i think they all have had you know shown some strengths and some weaknesses yeah and i think i mean abel's was good in the circle two games ago yeah. like you know he showed yeah. that it's just it's not enough that's all yeah, and I, I think that's fine. Um, but that overall towards likes where the team is and how camp has gone. We talked yesterday about kind of some of the outstanding things that we're looking for for the team as a whole and not necessarily just individual players in terms of, you know, the power play and face-offs and, and other things like that that they need to work on. Torts says, yeah, we got to work on some stuff. So I think he agrees with us in a yeah, lot of ways. I think he does. I think, you know, the one good thing about Torts is that you don't allow the opportunity for like a Jason Akison syndrome where mm. he looks good for a really short time. So now all of a sudden you ride the wave and then when he's up there riding the wave, then all of a sudden there's not, not much there. And, but always does well in the age help you send him down and always when he brings it back up, nah, not so much uh, fans clamor for him. You know, you run into that trouble, but, but torch does eliminate a lot of that. Yeah. I, you know, I think there is that. But also, I think it is interesting how he approached, you know, the maybe lack of energy against the Bruins in that preseason game. And he seems to be OK with it, that he's been working them a certain way in practice yeah. that had an effect on the game. And he's OK with it. Um, I think it's interesting just because he also lamented the inability for him to have a quote unquote real last preseason game. And that's on you know, him. That's yeah, not, that's on him. He could have coached well, no. as many. No, no, hold on. He could have coached as many games as he wants. You know what that schedule not for him. was. Not no, for no. him. Yes. You for know the team. No, okay, but still, it sounds like it's still a little for him, too. And I they don't knew think so. and they knew when preseason Based on started how he was that, talking about that. They knew when preseason started that this game was gonna be garbage. So well, that's true. That is that is definitely that. true. 
that, you know, maybe they could have planned a little bit better for yeah. that, but they, but they absolutely, you know, would have liked to have played the full NHL lineup in the last preseason game, but can't. Then you should have and played it in the last two. So, like, you know this. Yeah. And he just made a decision to run his camp a certain way, you know, and if the guys were tired for that game, the guys were tired for that game. He wants to run his camp. I know, but he wants to run his camp. Again, you could talk to a lot of people around the league and I talked to some, not a lot of people run their camp this way, Rachel. It's just, there's a reason. I'm not disagreeing with you. I'm just saying this is the choice he has made. I know. And I think, you know, Time will tell if this works in terms of how the Flyers come out right. in this initial road trip. Right. Um, I and I, I think that remains to be seen. Um, you know, there's a, a couple more guys. He's confident in Sam Erson's readiness for the season. I think we are too. Yeah. I I think you know, obviously he's not going to play against the devil. That we worry about more than is he ready just for the season? Yep. Yep. But he has said over and over again that. He doesn't know what's going to happen with the goaltending right. duo. Right. So we're all in the same boat there. Um, he did talk about Noah Cates, that he does need to kind of unlock some of his potential there and create some more offense, which is something we have said as well. Yeah. I just, again, though, I think they're, look, Noah Cates did get rushed. He got rushed into being put into a very important position <clears throat> and had what you would call like a career year a couple of years ago. It's hard to recreate that when you're a young player, when you're kind of like thrown into that and maybe expectations aren't there. And then now all of a sudden the pressure's on. And so like Kate's may never get back to that. That's what happens to players sometimes when they get it a little bit too soon, too much too soon. And we're not talking like he was a star, but what do you have like 40 points, you know, and he's not able to get close to that. And so I don't know if he was ever going to be more than that. They seem to think so, but they may get disappointed about that. Well, hopefully they put him in the right spot, um, which, in my opinion, is on the wing. Yeah, and I agree with that. And we'll we'll go from there. All right. The other Metro Division teams have been busy at their camps. Uh, some turmoil, some good things. And we're going to get into what's been going on around the division coming up next. Hey, NFL fans, you could start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you could check out latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. Again, take Minnesota over New York in London for the NFL. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. On tomorrow's show, we will recap the final preseason game against the Devils, see if there are any more clues there. We're going to give our roster predictions for the Monday deadline. It'll be a good show, so stay tuned. Looking around the Metro division, I think for Columbus, obviously the biggest challenge they've had this camp is adjusting their lineup without Johnny Goudreau, um, while also balancing, you know, honoring him and getting the hockey work done, right? Yeah, it's going to be hard. I mean, they lost line a two in a way when they traded him, right? So he's not there. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of adjustments there. Well, and everybody lost line a at this I know, point. Well, now they did. <laughs> but but, but they, they knew they weren't going to have him for the season because they, you know, he wanted to go. So it's a big season of adjustment. It's impossible to tell how they're going to do. If they come in last, nobody's going to say a word. Yeah, I, I think so. Um the GVR seems to be settling in well there. Yeah, why so not? No ex- good for I mean, no expectations. He can go out there and score some goals and have fun. Yeah, and he'll have some power play time. Yes. Um, and it'll be good for him. Um, the Pittsburgh Penguins, um, our old pal Kevin Hayes is hanging around there. Um, it's looking like he might be their 4C uh, with Blake Lazat out uh, with a concussion for mm-hmm. now. But um, we'll see how that plays out in terms of the injuries. The pens are just like broken <laughs> at the moment. Yeah, they just, they're a tough team. And honestly, Hayes at 4C is not great. He's better 3C than 4C. So the, yeah. it's a, it's going to be a tough go for them. Is Carlson starting the season? I haven't heard one way or the other yet. He rehab skated yesterday, but yeah. that's kind of where we're at. Uh, yeah. Matt Nieto had 
MCL surgery, Alex Nadalkovic week to week, like that's and that's just like the beginning. There's a lot. You know what it is? They're like that car. You once in a while you see it on the highway where um, they're missing a window, so they just put a cardboard piece of cardboard yeah. there with some duct tape. That's what the Penguins are. You know, you say that, and they have such a history of playing like that with random people from Wilkes-Barre Scranton that people at the NHL level have never heard of. Sure. And they managed to like band-aid together a team that wins games. So it's been a while though. It has. It's it's kind of a different era than that. But can they pull that off at the beginning of the season? Uh, we will see. Uh, the Rangers, unfortunately, Artemi Panarin was injured Tuesday night uh, against the Devils. We'll see, you know, if they're serious or or whatnot. It's the second time he was kind of banged up in the preseason. So yeah, the first time was oh, enough, and then then mm -hmm. it happened. I mean, look. We haven't really talked about it on the show. This is a good segue to say that at the Board of Governors meeting, they did talk about shortening the preseason, shorten the yep. preseason. The amount of injuries that are out there yep. is astronomical to start a season. And so really there should be four players. games. Yeah. I think four games is plenty. Guys can play two games and they, they'll be fine. Yeah, because otherwise they're just they're getting hurt. They, these guys stay in shape. It's not like they come in camp and they have to get in shape. Um, it's just. It's not working out. I mean, teams are missing really key players. Yeah, Ryan Lindgren's out. Jimmy Vesey is also hurt. Um, Brennan Othman, who we've talked about a yeah. lot, um, has played all the preseason games for the Rangers. So he's looking like he's got... He'll make it. Um, he'll probably make it. He'll make it. Adam Edstrom, another guy pushing for a spot. Yeah. That I think he'll yeah, make he's it given He's had some experience already. So yeah, he'll make it. Yeah, um, Carolina, you know, they had a game canceled due to the hurricane. Um, so last night uh, they had a game against the Preds that was only their fourth preseason game. Um, but they played mostly prospects and PTOs against a full Nashville squad coming oh in. Um, we were recording before the outcome of that right. game. So uh, it should be an interesting one uh, oh, yeah. to have watched. Um, but they do have a, you know, a few prospects battling for spots there. Yeah. I mean, Jackson Blake's a little too young. I would probably say, and I love the name, you know, me, Felix Unger. Yeah. Once you put Felix Unger in a sentence, I know. I'm all in, but Felix Unger Sorum at least had played. God bless those parents. <laughs> yes. Great sense of humor, but you know, look, he's played professionally already. So I'd put him, you know, yeah. in the lead for all that, just because of that experience. I think you're, you're probably right there. And then the Washington Capitals, obviously we saw them earlier in the preseason. They have their last preseason game on Saturday against Boston while there's regular season games going on in the global series, which is all kinds of weird, but um, the NHL, boo. I think, you, you know, the, the big question for me in terms of what they're trying to accomplish this camp is, integrating Andrew Mangiapane into the lineup and seeing how that works. Cause Mangiapane, you know, had a good season two years ago, but last yeah. year was, uh, and, and he's so a smaller he gonna, guy. You never yeah. know when those guys are going to sort of run out. Um, I wonder about Jacob Verano because he looked really good. I've lost track whether he's going to make the team or not though. Um, so I don't know how close he is. I feel like he's probably close. And then, you know, Will Ovechkin set Gretzky's record. When I said it last year that he wouldn't before the season started, people moaned and groaned at me. And it's like, listen, guys, when they get older, you never know what's going to throw them off. And so now everybody's like, oh, well, see, he ended the season really well. So he's he's going to do it this year. And I'm like, I can't say that because he already got nicked up in preseason. Like, yeah, you know, like this is you, you see that he is getting older. You see that he's not in the same shape. I think it's a coin flip. Yeah. I, and I think that, you know, looking for clues in preseason, it's still hard to tell. Yes. Right. I just, I just don't think he's had like a camp where it feels like, He's picking up where he left off. Right. I, you know, he didn't start off well. They, they're they always going to make excuses for him. Don't worry. Ovi's fine, whatever. Because they're going to put him in regardless. Like, he he could have zero days of training camp. And if he wants to play, they're just going to play him. So we'll just have to see. Yeah, I think so. The other question for me is, will Lindgren have just as good a year this year as he did last year? I mean, I, don't I see think why he's... not. 
Yeah, I just think it was so good. And he like carried that team in a lot of ways he through did. some of their rough patches. And it's like, I don't necessarily see them having as many rough patches as they did last year. But also like, I don't know if he outplayed himself last year it's, or it's not. It's fair to think that. Um, I kind of see that he's maybe worked his way up to that. It's been, you know, kind of like a slow build. Yeah, I think that's fair, too. I just think, like, I just don't know. Um, yeah. I, but I think that'll be a big kind of lynch it's something to watch. On, is this season going to work for the Caps? I still don't think they're going to make the playoffs, but I think nah, that probably not. his play is going to be a big part of Just the way they made it last now. year was bizarre. I was at that game. Yeah. It was just totally bizarre, man. <laughs> Yeah, it was crazy. It was. It absolutely was. Uh, the New York Islanders uh, last and definitely least in my book. But, um, <laughs> Ouch. I know I'm terrible. But uh, obviously, we just saw them. Not a ton of roster spots there. Um, interestingly, uh, Sorokin was back on the ice taking shots before practice yesterday. And this has been kind of their biggest concern right now. Yeah, I wouldn't start him um, to start the season. There's no reason to. They have Skarik. They have Alarmov. That's fine. Skarik at least has NHL experience. Not a lot, but enough. I would just do it that way. They're, you know, I think they can get by. I Did I see that Hudson Fashing still has a chance to make it, right? He might be one of yeah. those guys that eh, Lou likes that kind of player. And so I think, but again, he's not going to score a lot of points for you. I don't know. I still if if Wallstrom plays fourth line, he may still score some points. So I don't think it's the end of the world if he does, because they're going to have to get it from somewhere. Otherwise, their defensive goaltending is certainly playoff worthy. It's the rest. Yeah. Well, like I said, you know, after the Islanders game, if the Islanders fourth line doesn't score against the Flyers, is it really a Flyers Islanders game? Right. So I mean, Pelic, <laughs> that'll be part of that. Pelic and Pulak is one of the best shutdown pairings yeah. in the league. And that's what keeps them in it, too. Yep, absolutely. And I didn't realize the Islanders had fired their strength and conditioning coach. I didn't know after either. the Sorokin injury. Okay. Uh, because it was done lifting, you know, uh, in the weight room. So th that is a wild turn of events. That's uh, a tough thing on the, on, the on, on a on a guy like that. You know, it's like how much blame can you really place? The player could say no. Yeah, that is true. All right. Uh, we did not talk about the New Jersey Devils in that rundown. And uh, that is because the it's on purpose. Be, it is on purpose because, you know, we're going to talk about them next when we preview the final preseason game. We're going to do that uh, coming up next. All right. Uh, as we have noted and has uh, John Tortorella mentioned yesterday, this is nowhere near the Flyers roster that we're going to see. It's nowhere near the Devils roster because they've been in Prague. They even um, played their AHL lineup in their last preseason game against the Rangers that they had. So um, that team has just kind of been gone. Um, Eric Johnson is going to play uh, seventh defenseman uh, and he'll have like maybe four other guys. Now, what if he NHL gets nicked guys. up in that game, Rachel? Never mind. Go ahead. Keep oh going. Oh, my God, Russ. It'll never happen. No, I don't think so. But especially because the Devils players that are out there know that it's just like basically an AHL practice right. for them. But, um, you know, they um, decided, the Flyers decided to give them a lighter practice yesterday. Um, because of the Boston game, they needed a recovery practice. Right. Uh, and that was more important. So they're going to have a full practice of the NHL squad in the morning and then only have a few of those guys have to okay, I like that. play the game. Yeah. That's a good I think, strategy. you know, given what they had to do, mm -hmm. that, that was probably the best approach. Yeah. Um, and then he's going to try and get the guys to Lappy as quickly as possible after the game. Right. Uh, so we'll look for those uh, guys on waivers or being yeah. sent down um, probably first thing on Friday morning. The Greyhound buses will be ready to roll. Yep. Going straight to Allentown. So I think, or plane tickets, or plane um, tickets. maybe in Jet Luchenko's case. Right. But um, get to I, we will see what happens with that. But 
I think, you know, looking at the devils, obviously Luke Hughes injury is still a factor for them um, because, you know, the main squad is in Europe. Jeremy Broder Annette has been the big story there. I mean, is it really a big story? They have Jake Allen, you know, they have Markstrom. There's, you know, yeah. I was at the draft when they picked them. It's a nice thing. This is just hype. That's all it is. Yep. And if, you know, if you have to play somebody in these games, you might as well play him and, sure. you know, milk some publicity out yep. of it. And that's what they're doing. Yep, absolutely. Um, gonna have to get used to hearing his name and seeing it in a devil's jersey and not getting immediately angry because they don't. Well, like I'm sure he's not wearing March the same 10. number. No, no. <laughs> um, yeah, I think you know, besides that, what the the guys that are gonna play have to do is obviously. Torts calls you out as maybe not having a good camp. You got to kill them. You got to like do your absolute best yeah. in this game, right? If you don't, Prove like, wrong. you're not you're not getting called up for the first month. So they've got to have an exceptional game for, in that regard. Yeah, I think so. Um, I also think that, you know, if you're Oliver Bonk, it's very clear that he knows he's going right back. Oh yeah. To junior. So he needs to take advantage um, and put into practice any teachings he's been given. Right. I mean, cause you never know how his season goes. If there's a chance he can play in the NHL at the very end, if he's having a great year, it's all possible. But if he doesn't look good here, it's not going to give John a lot of reason to think about that. Yeah. This is like your last chance to make a good first impression right. for these guys. And I think, you know, for the triplets, it's like, who's going to get that first call up right if none of them make the roster yeah uh and so there, there's a lot for these guys to prove i think helge grans who we've talked about is maybe a dark horse here yeah i think he's somebody that could really you know get on the map as they say i i i would look to see him do that yeah and i would say like for hunter mcdonald i would say uh he needs to really work on his defensive play so I Definitely. think he, you know, just because you're playing physical is one thing, but you have to come away with the puck a lot of times. And sometimes he's laying that big hit and then he still doesn't, he's not the guy with the puck. And in the end, you want to be the guy with the puck. Right. So, you know, I think there's a lot of work that all of these guys can do to make yeah. their case for call-ups to, to look good in front of torts. Um, you know, obviously Jenning has to step it up in this game if he's in it. Um, I'm assuming he will be, but I don't know if he's already written off. He's already written off because they'll probably have to put one at NHL pairing in there. It'll be like right. Johnson and somebody. So right. I don't know who that somebody is going to be. True. Um, and then who else is maybe not going to play here? I mean, there are these four guys, right? So yeah. maybe that's how it'll work out. Maybe. but. I don't know. And then, you know, as far as goaltending, I don't know. I, I assume they'll put Colas off. That's in. what I'm guessing. I mean, it's a home game. Let them play at home. Yeah, I think that's, you know, the best solution here. And um, we'll find out what the process is going to be for him, I guess. Afterwards, on Friday. afterwards yeah. Yeah. We'll find out afterwards. But um, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. I thought he looked really strong in long island and yeah he, I, I he think, was fine yeah so i want to see him play more and if this is the only times we're going to get a chance to might as well take advantage of it right um and, and kind of go from here but that's kind of what we're looking for in tonight's game um but is, is there anything else that you know these particular players can do no i think i think that's it i just think they have to show they belong or are worthy of being called up and, you know, I think they have to control play with, with the devils that are there. I think that's because if, if they don't, then everybody's going to be like, well, these weren't even the real devils and these guys didn't perform well. It's going to look even worse. Yeah, I think it'll be interesting. You know, I'm going to assume they're going to pull some guys from Lehigh Valley again because that's yes. what they've been doing. I hope Gendron is one of those guys. Yeah, that would be good. Um, I think... He would be really good to see again. I think Rizzo would be really good to yeah, see again. Yeah, it would be again. nice if Rizzo could get in there for a home game. It would be cool. 
Yeah, but beyond Last that, season home game, whatever your yeah. designation that is. Yeah, but beyond that, I don't know. I don't know what the lineup is going to look like. We'll find out this morning and uh, go from there. But again, last preseason game, we did it, Russ. We made it through the preseason. And um, one more game, and then we'll have the regular season. And tomorrow's show, we're going to recap the game, final roster predictions, and our thoughts of the week to kind of end training camp. As a reminder, we always want to hear from you. So if you've got mailbag questions or thoughts on a player you want us to address, let us know on Twitter at LockedOnFlyers. You can email us at LockedOnFlyers at Gmail or comment over on YouTube. I'm Rachel. I'm on Twitter at R Miriam. That's R-M-I-R-I-A-M. I'm Russ. I'm at Sportsology, S-P-O-R-T-S-O-L-O-G-Y. Thanks for making Locked On Flyers your first listen today. Now go check out Locked On NHL, where local experts keep you updated daily on all the biggest storylines ahead of the season. Find Locked On NHL on YouTube or wherever you listen to podcasts. Have a great day, everyone.